Hey, yet another Wrestling with Rosenberg, live from WrestleMania 30. Very excited. One of the start off with Daniel Bryan and keep things going with Roman Reigns. Pleasure. What's up, boys? How you doing? I'm good. How are you, man? Bright and early, man. I don't know if it's even bright out yet. It may not be bright. It yet. is super early. Well, I'll tell you what. How does it feel when you're when you start this early? That means that you have become someone that they need out there talking to people. Um, it's a good feeling. You gotta uh, like that, you, right? You, you can't make no money on the couch, so it's always a good feeling to be used and uh, you know do your thing. It's it's nice to have that responsibility. Um, any surprises over the course of the last now over a year that we've seen the emergence of the Shield? Um, anything that maybe you wouldn't have expected as a kid who has you know aspired to do this? Um, did you? Has it been what you expected it would be? I, I think so. You know, and a little bit more. It's. Uh, it, to be honest, it goes so fast. You know what I mean? It's like a roller coaster ride. You you got your ups and downs, but it, it, when you're out on the road, you're just living day by day, and you know you're just getting through it. But uh, you, it, it's been really good, man. I, I we've seen the world. We've made tons of money. I mean, it's it's been a great year. I couldn't I couldn't have ever asked for any more. What's the what's the real life relationship of the Shield like? How are are you guys? Are the are the three of you your closest friends in the company? What, what is your guys' relationship like? Uh, we're boys, man. We're brothers. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we we've been all over the world, um, made more money together than I've ever made in my entire life. Uh, seen so many awesome things, experienced so many different emotions, heard unbelievable reactions from so many different crowds. I I mean, you can't like bond with anybody in that way. And and fortunately, I, I've been able to do it with two two other brothers. You know. And and how did did the were you guys was there any was the shield um, a concept that was totally brought to you guys did you have some involvement in it? where did it where did it come from early early on uh, to be honest it was just we kind of th- they just threw it at us you know what I mean and like it, it was a, w- a bit of an awkward situation a lot of people saw us in those stupid turtlenecks when we debuted but like they had shields like with shield on it like. Yeah, yeah like I, over the I top, know, like, right? Yeah, here's like, the shield, like shield. a clear fiberglass shield with a big shield running down it, just so in, in case anybody needed to know what our name was. Right. But uh, <laughs> and then we just had this terrifying nightmare of like trying to get in the ring. You know, like you you <laughs> go in the ring like a certain way the majority of the time. You kind of you just I'll slide in, and that's how I do it. You've never been trained to go in there with a riot shield. You know, nobody in in this and did, business. Did you guys actually get to the point where you're trying to do that or no? We we got we like we got them and we're just you know we were like man we're about to debut who cares I'm excited about it. I don't care what they make me do I'll, I'll run out here naked who cares uh, but then like as we were going I think Vince saw it and he he wasn't feeling it so I mean anytime he he sees somebody ain't feeling it it's X Nade ASAP uh, um so so how early in your life did you know this was something you wanted to do which you have so many family members who have been involved in the wrestling business who was it what was it that made you uh, feel it deeply. Um, I mean, from just a little guy, you know what I mean? Like, the f- tiny, five years old, you know what I mean? Like, going through my dad's gear, you know what I mean? Like, coming up with tag team maneuvers with my cousins and stuff. Like, that was the initial thing we all wanted to do. Like, and in my family, that's really all you, you know, you look up to the men in your family. They're, they're the role models. They're the leaders. So, you're, they're the alpha males. So, that's who you want to be like. And we've had so many men in our family be able to do this and fortunate enough to be on the road and make money doing this. So that was initially the thought being where I'm from, Pensacola, Florida, down in Florida, we play football. Um, so every young man is going to probably end up doing that for a little while. Fortunately for me, I was pretty good at it and I got, pretty you know, good. yeah, I, I got a, a full ride to Georgia tech and, yep. and spent a little time there. But, uh, it was always either wrestling or football, and then it was like wrestling, football, and then wrestling. You know what I mean? So it's all that's just me. Did you enjoy football as much as you do wrestling? Was it close? At at first, football was pretty fun, but I, once I got into college and you know a little bit older, and it became just you know I need to get a scholarship. I need to you know I need to I need to make this many tackles or this many sacks or like I'm trying to be all American. I'm trying to go to the league and it became more stressful than anything. Uh, the thing with wrestling is it's extremely stressful, but it 
it's it's art you know what i mean like you it's yours like football you're gonna play it the same way like a d tackle is gonna do what a d tackle does you know what i mean there's only a a few things he can do but a a performer can it's just limitless i can do anything i want to do i can portray anything i can show any emotion that needs to be shown so it's it's a lot more well-rounded i think well it's funny a lot of people when they ask me about why i love wrestling they'll, they'll say well do you love you know, do you love um, UFC? And I'll say, well, actually, a lot of the things that I love about wrestling are exactly what I don't get from UFC because I find the difference between someone who literally wants to just be beaten in the face and beat other people in the face versus someone who enjoys physicality but enjoys the artistic performance sure, yeah, yeah. makes for a different kind of person and a different kind of personality. And I think that's what's really cool, and that's kind of what you're expressing about this. Like, wrestling is great, but your personality can only be so much in, rest- in, in football. And in fact, if you inject too much personality in football, you get in trouble. Yeah. You get, in trouble and, 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 get some heat for that. Yeah, you get in, there's a lot of heat for that. As I, mean, as I, as I, as I have the, spend the week celebrating my Redskins signing to Sean Jackson. I mean, there's a, <laughs> being too different in football can, can create issues. Um, who, who in the locker room has, uh, has pulled you aside and, and been monumental in helping you guys out and helping, you know, make sure that you guys get this moment right. Yeah, you know, I mean, in the locker room, n- nobody, you know what I mean? Like, we we just do what we do, you know what I mean? Like we, we're the leaders in the locker room. Uh, you know, obviously, within the whole backstage, there's a lot of people that we, you know, we talk to, like Triple H and, and people like that for advice and, and, you know, experience things, you know what I mean? Like, if there's one thing that we don't have, it, which is very fastly being erased with what we've done in this past year, but you know it could be the experience thing. We only have one mania under our belt. We're going into our second one, but everything that we do, we're we're gaining that knowledge. But uh, I mean, as far as in the locker room, we don't really answer to anybody. We just do our thing and we we vibe like that. Is there anyone that you go to though that you enjoy asking for a word or saying like, uh, or let's say after a match? You know, like a lot of times, uh, if you work with someone who's more experienced, is there anything that you, after a match, you'll come away and be like, hey, how did this go? Or they'll say, or maybe they'll, will they, just, will, is it likely that someone would pull you aside and go, hey, I like that you did this, don't do this? Sure. I mean, well, we have uh, people like that, you know, our, our producers and, and, you know, veteran wrestlers who uh, who are now in a non-wrestling role. Um, but there's a ton of them, you know, Joey Mercury, uh, Michael P.S. Hayes, uh, Arn Anderson, there's a ton of guys that uh, they're great resources that we tap into. But, I mean, as far as in locker room, you know, young guys like us, you know, I think I feel like they come to us. You know what I mean? We don't go to nobody. Um, Joey Mercury getting put, in, put over all day. This is Joey Mercury day. I hope you're watching these. Um, my buddy, now speaking of putting people over, my buddy, I thought, uh, did a fantastic job with you, Mark Henry. I think uh, the moments you guys had were, in fact, I, I actually sat there and thought, hmm, this could have happened at WrestleMania. Like, I even thought there's a, sure, like, yeah, you versus yeah. Mark in a one-on-one at Mania could have put you over. But then you guys got to work a couple times, and I think the impact was still really effective. Can you feel when, with a match with a guy like that afterwards that something that it, it helps transition you and get seen even more seriously? Yeah, I, I think any time uh, you're fortunate enough to get in the ring with a guy like that, just I mean, not only with the experience he has and uh, being the veteran that he is, but... He's just a monster, you know what I mean? Anytime people can watch me fighting like a giant dinosaur, you know what I mean? Like you don't, you just don't see human beings like like uh, Mark Henry or Big Show. You know that that's the awesome thing about WWE is it's uh, it's just larger than life, and we have these people that are just they're just not around anymore. And Mark Henry is one of those guys, and to be the athlete that he is, as strong as he is, as big as he is, and the way he can move. You put put a guy like that with me, uh, and it's, I think it's fireworks. It's, yeah. it's awesome stuff. Well, it, it ended up the spear looked amazing, you know, because <laughs> that's what you really want, right? You you need to put over your spear and have that look like it could take out anyone, which is what makes those moments big. Which is, you know, I was almost a little surprised. I thought someone like Mark or Big Show would potentially end up in a match with you or a Cesaro, someone who's right on the cusp of being a monster themselves. True. Um, so where does one go from here? How do, how do you how do you maintain, you know, I, I, I don't want to say too much. Um, this past week, I was super busy uh, with the premiere of This Is Hot 97 on VH1 every Monday night at 1030. So I have my own TV show up against Raw now. So, uh, so yeah, 1030. I hope you're, I hope you're uh, willing to lose. <laughs> well, oh, don't worry. <laughs> we got a one chair, which is good. We didn't get your guys three, two or whatever you guys get. Um, 
So I, di- I didn't see exactly what the follow-up was, but after the Barclays Center show two weeks ago, there was a very noticeable promo that you guys cut with the crowd where you put over the Brooklyn crowd. And, and I was watching the show thinking, hmm, Shield is appearing very nice to the crowd tonight. And, uh, and then after you guys cut this promo, do you sense a direction that you guys are going? No, I think, you know, that night was a special night. Brooklyn is, uh, we love Brooklyn, man. Like, TLC, we, we tore that sucker up. That was our first match, our first pay-per-view. Um, I mean, we got all kinds of chance that night. I mean, just like eight different chants during that match. Um, and all those guys can tell you that we, we have a deep connection with Brooklyn. We love that place. Uh, outside of the parking, we love Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, you know, it's funny. It's a really, for all the kind of stereotypes people have about Brooklyn, like the way people talk, it's, a, it's as smart a wrestling crowd as you're going to get. It is. It so is. They yeah. know when something new and awesome is happening. And, and they're not scared to be like, nah. We don't like this, so get it out of here. You know what I mean? And and they're real, so I, I we appreciate that. You know they don't hold back, um, and and that's how we are. You know what I mean? We're we're fleshed out. This is how we are. We we come to fight, and uh, I feel like there's a lot of fight in the Brooklyn crowd, and and many others as well. Uh, sometimes literally fights in the Brooklyn crowd. <laughs> um, now, is who in the locker room exists right now that you think you know what? I want to be a single star in time to get to feud with this person before there's no time left. Is there anyone like that that you're thinking about? I, th- I think there's a good crop of, of young guys like myself that are, uh, you know, and you never know how your career is going to go or the path everybody's going to take. Um, but there's just a ton of guys, Cesaro, uh, Dean or Seth, um, Big E, uh, Daniel. Uh, there's, there's just a bunch of guys that I think – we can all step that you know we can step the game up we can raise that bar together uh and just hopefully we have you know we well, have no, no, uh, listen i don't no question to, and i don't mean to to step on what the present company you have is i think and i've been saying this on my podcast cheap heat i really think that this is the best moment for young talent in years in the wwe but i just wonder about if there's anyone who's fading you know, the, and not, there aren't that many. But I mean, when you think about it, you look sure, around. Yeah, yeah. You know, even John. I mean, John, Randy, all these guys aren't going to be around f- actively forever. I mean, to be honest, they'll probably be around for a good run. They're both relatively healthy and things like that. But those are guys. Those guys are becoming the older guard. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, there's someone like Triple H who probably doesn't have that many uh, runs left. But is there anyone like that that you think that would be really sweet if I got to have one of those before they left? Oh, absolutely, uh, John Cena and. Uh and uh, Triple H, you know what I mean? Obviously, uh, Cena, he's been the top guy for the past 10 years. <clears throat> um, if you want to be on that level, you're going to have to beat him. Uh, you're going to have to take it from him. So uh, that, that's something as a man I'd like to do. Um, and then Triple H, the same way. Uh, he, you know, he's on a little bit of a different platform being who he is and, and how he's connected. But uh, that, that's, I think, uh, something everybody should want to do is, is be able to step in, step in the ring with H. Do you have uh do you ever do you watch wrestling? Do you still sit around? Do you utilize the WWE network and watch classics? Um, man, I I'm telling you, I have to get unlimited data because ever since the network came out, I it's just on my phone and I'm just watching it nonstop. Cardio, anytime I can watch it, we're just sitting there. I just put it on and then and it's funny because like you you put the the network on and then you'll notice like dudes just start gravitating to it. It's like you're just watching it by yourself in the locker room, and then all of a sudden there's four people around you, and we're all just watching wrestling. So we do a, a good bit of watching. Is, who do you? Is there anyone you search for the most? Like when even in the YouTube days before the network, is there anyone in particular you love to just YouTube and say, "Let me check out some classics from so and so." You know, right now I'm just kind of letting it stream and just watching whatever comes up because I feel like that's the best. Sometimes when I search, I feel like I close my mind to stuff because a lot of times for me, I just I try to watch top guys, uh, guys who drew money. Guys who are infectious, you know what I mean? People gravitated around him. So all those guys are the guys I, I've tried to emulate and, uh, you know, just pull from. Hey, listen, we are very excited for you. Uh, this weekend, um, anything – was there an ideal scenario for you for WrestleMania? What, what, what goals does one have when you go into a match that's this big a deal in front of this many people? When you're about to walk out through that curtain and have that moment when the music hits – and uh, it's going to be an epic moment. Well, you guys don't come through the curtain. I don't know how you're going to do it, exactly how it's going to work with the layout of the Superdome. But uh, That's one of our moments is right. you don't know where we're coming from. So what, what's the goal for you guys? What do, what do you think about doing in, as far as your performance goes? 
I, you know, I mean, for any show we're ever a part of, it's we want to steal the show. So if we if we can have the best match on on the card, that I mean, that's always the game plan. Um, obviously, to create a couple WrestleMania moments within the Shield, and of course, win. And you've got and you've got some opponents that are very interesting. Are you excited about the match you actually have? I, it, it is unbelievable. It's something uh, you know, as a as a young as a young man, I would have never thought like I'd be fighting Kane and the New Age Outlaws at WrestleMania. 30. And that they'd still be good. I, <laughs> and that the New Age the New Age Outlaws are very good still. And that and that's the thing, you know. What I mean, with, in this business, you you can get better as you get older, and you see that. You see guys like the Outlaws. You see Gold Dust come back, and they're Gold just phenomenal. flawless. You I know mean, what I mean? Moving like he's like he's 18 years old, and it's like, how do you do that? But it's because these guys are smart. You know what I mean? They're veterans. They, they have wisdom. They know what to do, when to do it, and how to conserve you know everything that they have. So they're not doing anything stupid or out of place. These, these guys know what they're doing, and, and we're not taking them lightning. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Roman Reigns, you're going to see a lot from this man, I have a hunch, in the, in the coming months and years. Thank you so much.